Turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 1. And last week we talked about Mary. You ladies were on the hot seat last week. Men, it's your turn. My sermon title this morning is Joseph. Simply Joseph. It's my Christmas series that I, I did a few years ago and I'm doing it again this year. Matthew chapter 1 verse 18. We'll read responsibly, I'll read 18, you read 19, and so on all the way down. Let's all stand out of respect to God's Word, please, this morning. Verse 18, Now the birth of Jesus was on this wise when his uh, mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Before they came together, she, found, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now that word came together means that they've fornicated or had in a, you know, marital relations. Alright? Verse 19, let's read together. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But, while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not, to take thee, or sorry, sorry, take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her, in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she be, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins, and all uh, and all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. And he and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. And Lord, thank you for this wonderful th uh, picture. Lord, this wonderful actual event that took place, and you've documented it for us. As we celebrate this Christmas season, Lord, help us to remember it, that this is seasons all about you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Last week we started again, as I said, we started off our series about Mary and I talked about why did God choose Mary. God could have chose anybody. Amen? Uh, I also challenged you, if God cho chose to do it again, would He pick you, ladies? I said three reasons why I believe God chose Mary. Number one, he, uh, Mary kept herself pure. She did not uh, have any uh, uh, relations with any anybody else uh, um, sexually, uh, but she also kept herself pure of mind and spirit, and she 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 she, she focused on God. Uh, um, you know, this day and age, young folks uh, they kiss and they hold hands. Uh, first of all, they start with holding hands. It's, I'm going to give you a little dating tip right now. Holding hands will lead to more. When I hold my wife's hand, I feel warm and fuzzy. And I'm married to her. I'm allowed to hold her hands. But I'm here to tell you, you young folks, don't hold hands until you're married. Because uh, hold hands will lead to kissing. And kissing will lead to immorality. And immorality will lead to a ruined life. And she decided, Mary decided at a young age, I believe, that she, she uh, decided that she was going to keep herself for pure for her husband. Number two, Mary knew who she was, a sinner. Mary knew that she, she, she was just a sinner. And uh, I believe Mary kind of stayed up at night thinking, okay, God, why me? Why did you choose me when she 
felt Jesus kick in her womb. Uh, why me, God? This is the Savior. She knew she was carrying the Savior. And uh, uh, she, she probably thought, well, God, you could have chosen my friend, you know, Bertha. Uh, I don't know. Uh, 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 or, you know, Beulah. Uh, uh, she you know, whatever. You could have chosen so-and-so. But you chose, why? Because I'm a sinner. And there's there's many people out there that are. Uh, she probably thought that there's many of her 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 school chums and maybe the chums that are at, at her synagogue were 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 better than uh, less of a sinner than she was. By the way, there I don't. There's not a degree of sinners. Do you realize that? For the wages of sin is death. One sin you deserve to die. How many people have ever sinned in their life? Raise your hand. All right, you don't raise your hand, you're in trouble. Uh, um, we have all sinned, and for one, okay, what what sin? Okay, if you lie or you murder, which one is a graver sin? The same. They're the same. Same punishment. Is that fair? Yeah, it is. It's fair to God, and what's fair to God needs to be fair to us. Okay. Uh, I, by the way, number th third thing I said that Mary was keenly spiritual. Mary loved God. And she wanted, uh, every day, I believe every day she woke up trying to find a way to please God. And isn't that a great way to wake up? This morning I woke up and, and uh, I, you know, I didn't get much sleep last night. I, I was tired and I'm, I, I am tired. I'll go home this afternoon and I'll, I'll uh, meditate in the Word of God. No, I won't meditate in the Word of God. I'll meditate on my pillow, uh, the fluffiness of my pillow. I'm going to go home and take a nap this afternoon. Uh, uh, folks, listen to me. For us to be keenly spiritual, God needs to be first. Hey, man. He needs to be the first and foremost of our life. This morning I didn't. I woke up. And the first person, the first person I talked to. You want to guess who it was? Who was the first person I talked to? God. I didn't say. I didn't say good morning to my wife. I said good morning to God. God, hey, good morning. Thank you for a beautiful day today. Lord, I just pray for so and so that they'll come up to church this morning because I know they were I, 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 doing out last night, and I know that they were doing some some things last night. And dear Lord, I pray for so and so. I man, I haven't seen them out in a, out to church in a few weeks. Man, I just Lord, and I pray for so and so and so and so and so and so. And Lord, I I. I I'm going, to, I'm going to be selfish and pray for me today because, Lord, I want to be spiritual so my folks can hear you through my words. And that was my prayer this morning. And, Lord, I pray for these residents of the home. The man, they, they would come and they would they'd be able to hear what I say today because my throat's a little sore today and I don't want to have to yell. But Mary kept herself keenly spiritual. Which brings us to the next character or next person in the in the manger scene here. We talked about Mary. Now we're talking about Joseph. Joseph and Mary were engaged. And back in that time of back in that day and age, there was it was a legal contract. When you get engaged, those who got engaged. Uh, uh, who's got an engagement ring on? Mrs. Tixay, do you have an engagement ring on? Did your hubby give you an engagement ring? Say again? Wedding ring. Wedding ring. Uh, I, my wife, she doesn't wait. Man, none of you have got an engagement ring. Sarah, no, you don't have one yet. Um, uh, when, uh, okay, did he propose to you or did you propose to him? <laughs> We're getting married. I figured you um, uh, he proposed to her. That is a legal contract. I proposed to my wife. That's a legal contract. Do you realize that? Uh, a few years ago, there was a lady. Uh, she a guy was guy proposed to her. She said yes. They ended up not. Uh, they ended up not getting married. Uh, it was in the United States, and she sued him and won, I think, a couple million dollars for breach of contract. Do you realize back in the Bible they took that seriously? Now, did this day and age, will you marry me? Yeah. Oh, I fell out of love with you. I don't have to marry you anymore. You know, no. Uh, uh, but the word espouse meant 
at, uh, that a parental contract had been made at an earlier time. Joseph and Mary were to be were 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 married in, in all intents purposes, or were to be married in uh, in the near future. But what a surprise when Mary informed Joseph that she was with child. Now, if your fiancé that you have never been with came up to you and said, Dear, I'm pregnant. What would go through your mind? <laughs> See ya, honey. Out the door. But by Jewish law, he could effectively break off the engagement by writing a bill of divorcement. We find that in Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1. It says, but when a, sorry, when a man hath taken a wife and married to her, and it came to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he hath found some uncleanliness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. He could have just said, honey, here you go, get out. By Jewish law, he could have made her also a public example. Hmm. You know what the punishment for that would have been? We'll find out. Deuteronomy 22.22 It says if a man and that's not talking just gender male but if a man be found lying with a woman actually it is sorry it is a man I'm sorry. If a man male factor be found lying with a woman married to an husband they shall both of them die. Punishment was death. By how? It's found in John 8 5. By stoning. They were to be taken to the town square and stoned. Mary was, Joseph could have said, okay, oh, hey, hey this, this lady. She, she cheated on me. And she would have had to take the town square. This day and age would have been Victoria Park. And tied to a stake and stoned to death. Didn't they take infidelity really serious back then? Amen? Hey, Kids, Bob also says if you're disobedient, you also should be taken to the town square and stoned. How many people are glad that they don't live in that didn't live in that day and age? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I think we've sugar coated sin. Adultery and is still sin, isn't it? If you're married to a woman, you need to stay with that woman. You're married to a man, you need to stay with that man. You're not married, you need to stay to yourself. Hey kids, you better obey your parents. They tell you to go clean your room. Go clean your room. By the way, shoving everything in the closet, teenager, or shoving everything under the bed. How many kids do that? Or have done that? Come on now. Do you do that, brother? No? Mrs. Tixay, does he do that? Or what? Should we take him down to the town square and stone him? <laughs> that's not... That's, that, this is, by the way, this is free. That's not right. You gotta obey your parents, just as just as she uh, he could have put uh, Mary away and 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 had her or had her uh, as a public example. He chose not to. Why do you think that he chose he that he chose not to expose her publicly and get, and, and let her to be punished? If the place of her supposed sin could not be determined, Joseph was under no obligation to expose according to, according to the law. And being the kind of man he was, he chose not to make her a public example. He, would, he just decided in his heart to break their engagement 
pub or privately. I think his heart probably was broken. I remember I was talking to a Christian lady uh, at one of the churches I was preaching at, and her she was supposed to be married, and the man broke off her engagement three weeks before the wedding. She was broken hearted. I don't know how long it was supposed to be before Mary and Joseph were to be married, but he decided that she was pregnant. I don't think he, when she said, Oh, God said in a dream, honey, that I was pregnant by the Holy Ghost. I don't think he believed her. That's why God had to come to him in a dream. Later on, the, as I said, the angel Gabriel, the archangel, came to tell Joseph just who was the daddy of the baby in her, in his uh, his fiance's womb, and we know that who that was. Who was the dad? God the Father. Do you know many versions say that Joseph was. Jesus' daddy, and that's wrong. And he also was told that this the child that he was going to be step step off for was going to be the savior of the world. Man, at that point in time, I would be shaking in my boots. I would wake up going, uh, 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 you sure? <laughs> God, uh, why me? <laughs> Joseph was handpicked just as Mary was by God to play such a integral uh, integral part uh, in 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 the sa- in the, our savior uh, norm a uh, young life have you ever wondered what he must have thought i have often the songwriter put these were put some words uh, in a, in the very thought that I just mentioned to you in jo- the, the the song Joseph's song when he said when the songwriter penned how could it be this baby in my arms sleeping now so peacefully uh, uh, peacefully the son of God the angel said how could it be Lord I know he's not my own not my flesh not my bones still father let this baby be the son of my love father show me where I fit into this plan of yours how can a man be a, the, be a father to the son of God Lord for my life I have been a simple carpenter how can I raise a king Oh, how can I raise a king? He looked so small, his face and hands so fair. But when he cries, the sun seems to despair. But when he laughs, it shines again. How could it be? God chose Joseph for many reasons. What made him so special? This trio, in this trio, Mary, Joseph, and and Jesus, Joseph is the one of whom we know really about the least. We know he's a carpenter, but above that much, we do not know much. According to the scripture, there are at least four reasons why God chose Joseph to be the, uh, the uh, to rear to be the earthly dad or the stepfather to Jesus and to rear him. We must remember that God is Jesus' father and Joseph was a man who reared him here on this earth. We also must remember that God know, knew, has, has always known what he was doing. Nothing surprises God. You may be surprised, but nothing surprises God. Let me give you some four reasons why I believe God chose uh, Joseph to be the spiritual dad. First of all, Joseph was a man of great mercy. 
We find that in verse 19, it says, of our text of Matthew 1, it says, Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Though God's idea of morality have never changed, man has changed. Morality, what is immoral, what is moral today was immoral five years ago. Yesterday I was, we, last night we were uh, at, a, uh, at a function. And I, I like to watch people. I like to, to just, to, I'm a people watcher. I like, not, to, not in a judgmental way, but I like to, to, to know, okay, this person, this person seems to be upset, this person seems to be whatever. But I, I, I watched people yesterday that claim to be Christians dressed in the most immodest, immoral dress. And by the way, it still sickens God. Listen to the most immoral, immodest, immoral music. And by the way, it still sickens God. Hugging and kissing and necking and batting. By the way, it still sickens God. The Bible says, I am the Lord thy God, I change not. But showing mercy should never change. I could have gotten up and spoken and said, you wicked generation. Would I have been biblically correct? Absolutely. But it would have been the right time to do it? No. In these days, immorality was actually viewed as a sin and simply not an alternative lifestyle. They took sin seriously. Again, if they sinned, uh, if, 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 if it was found out that she had an affair, she would have been what? Stoned to death. Now it's so well. What did he do wrong? Now couples don't get married. They just stay living together for years and years and years and years and years and years. And years. Immorality is still a sin against God and man. I said immorality is still against a sin a sin against God and man. I said immorality is still a sin against God and man. Amen. Joseph's first thought were that his virtuous devout wife to be had gone out and played the harlot. Remember now, this sin was considered a crime and punishable by public exposure and death by stoning. No one ever caught her in the supposed sin. And I use that term, supposed sin, loosely because it was not a sin. Because the Holy Spirit came down. No one knew where and when this supposed sin took place. Joseph, I'm sure, wanted to believe that his betrothed, uh, uh, his betrothed, and I'm sure very much uh, loved wife to be, was telling the truth. But at this point, Joseph decided to break the engagement and simply let her go. This exhibits great mercy. Because he did not want Mary to be, uh, 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 sorry, he did not want to to do, sorry, because he did not do to Mary what he could have done to her. He could have had her stoned, but he was showing great mercy. Again, the wages of sin is. So, how many people sin? Aren't you glad God did not cash in the death sentence yet? Do you remember Ananias and Sapphira? We talked about tithing this morning. Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5, they lied to the Holy Ghost. They, they did not give what they should have given. And what happened to Ananias and Sapphira? Anybody? They died in the church. Pretty scary stuff. Hey, folks! Bible says you look upon a woman to lust or a man to lust, you've committed what? Adultery. You've sinned. How many people, be honest with yourself, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but how many people have ever looked upon somebody and said, ooh, wow. 
I think pretty much all of us have done it adult-wise anyways. You kids, young kids, you never ever do that until you're married. You should have died. Well, I should have died. But I'm so glad God shows His mercy. Just as I, I believe Joseph, Joseph uh, remembered uh, all the teachings in the synagogue and the church house uh, about mercy and that he wanted to be merciful. Hey, we, we oftentimes, if somebody crosses us, we, oh, I'm never going to talk to them again. Or if they sin. Here, here's, here's, here's one that's found in, 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 in a lot of circles in Christendom, and a lot of men who don't know what they're talking about, they say this. They say, person sins. Brother, that person must not have been saved. They must not have been saved. Oh, Brother Tick said, Jim never showed up for soul winning. He must not be saved. Oh. And we have a condescending look. You know, when we judge people like that, it's not showing mercy. Hey! Did God show mercy on you? You still alive? Should you be? I'm thinking of where, if I wasn't saved, where I, where I would be. I thought of that when I read over my sermon this morning. I thought of that. Where would I be if I wasn't saved? I'd probably be dead from alcohol poisoning. Jail. Prison. Leg blowing off from being in the army. Stepping on an IED. I don't know. But I'm so glad that I got smart and God showed me mercy and I got right with God. Number two. I'm going to give you two today and two tonight. Joseph was a man of great principle. We verse, look in verse, uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 20 of Matthew, and it says, While he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, Fear not to take thee, uh, sorry, unto thee, Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20 says he thought on these things. He was like, hmm. He was thinking. In other words, he pondered the next step. There were two courses opened up to him, according to verse 19, to make her public example and to put her away privately. I'm sure that in his thought process it, it took him to places where he could encourage himself. Luke 2, 2 verse 41 tells us that Joseph knew where to find encouragement when he needs it, when he needed it. And it, the, that verse says, Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast uh, of the Passover. My dear friends, this feast of the Passover is where Jewish folks went to get encouraged of God. Why don't we have our feast of the Passover every day to be encouraged to do right? You know, every day you wake up, you have a choice to do right or to do wrong. You have a choice to love people or hate people. You do. You have a choice to serve God or not serve God. You have a choice to <coughs> choice to do whatever, but the choice is yours. <coughs> He thought that he had lost his darling, the one, his, and his one and only true love. During this time of great loss, he knew he could go to, go to God for help and encouragement and that God knew the answer. By the way, God still does know all the answers. And he, would only, uh, he could only do this if he asked God why and he listened to him. You ever been put to a time of trial and heartache and you wondered to ask God, why? I have. I have. A man of great principle, and I'm talking to you men tonight, this morning. You men need to be, us men need to be men of great principles because we are the head of the home. If the head of the home is not a man of great principle, then there's a trouble. You ladies, you also need to be a person of great principle. I'm talking 
everything you decide must be decided on what the Word of God says. Everything. You, you, you know, I went to... Uh, I went to this thing last night, not to, for the food, not for the fellowship. I went there to, to preach the Word of God. Hey, I preached the Word of God, 